Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber and this is the third video in my series of learning how to make an avatar in Blender that you can port into Unity and put in VR chat. In this video, I'm just going to go quickly through my process of how to add more clothing, sometimes clothing that may not fit, sometimes clothing that's not rigged to this avatar, and sometimes clothing that is. Let's get started. <laughs> As I've mentioned in previous videos, before I started this model, I made sure that I had all of the FBXs for all of the assets I wanted to include on this model put in a singular folder. And I've also made a folder within that folder that has all the textures that go along with those assets, including their normal maps and everything that came along with those assets. I've also made sure that beforehand all of the textures are named properly so I can easily find them when I want to add them onto my avatar. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Import, FBX, and I'm going to choose the next model that I want to add. So I think I'm going to start with a pair of shoes, and I'm just going to either double click or click Import FBX. And here they are on the bottom, and it looks like these ones are mostly rigged to something else. I'm not sure. And because of this, I'm going to go ahead and rig these manually myself. I'm not going to merge the two armatures together like I would if it was a perfect fit. What I'm going to go ahead and do is toggle down this new armature that was just imported. I'm going to select the armature and shift select so that it selects the armature, the pose, and the actual armature. And I'm going to click X to delete that. Then I'm going to go into the shoe itself and I'm going to look at this little tab right here to view my object data properties and under vertex groups I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these groups so I can make all the weight painting from scratch myself to make sure that it fits to this model. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these shoes around a little bit so that they actually fit perfectly on my model. So looking from the X axis view I'm going to press G to move and I'm going to move these in place. I'm going to scale them a little bit. The width doesn't matter right now. We're just kind of going for like length and scale to see if it's a good proportion to the body. And now what I'm going to do is make sure that these are going to fit on the model perfectly. So what I'm going to do is while these are selected, I'm going to hit tab to enter edit mode and I can only see the front of every plane, but I want to be able to see through all of these polygons and everything. So if you see, if I select just a bit right there, it's not going to select anything on the back and I want it to be able to select everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Alt Z and that's going to make it so that it's pretty much see through. So you can see there's a bunch of orange dots and black dots, but if I select all of that same spot now, you can see it selected everything behind it as well. So I'm going to select this entire shoe and I'm going to hit G to move and I want to move it left to right. So I'm going to hit X to move it on the X axis and I'm just going to nudge it over to the right a little bit so it looks like it's right in the right spot. Then I'm going to select the other shoe, G again to move, X on the X axis, and I'm going to move that along so that it's just in the right spot as well. I'm going to go ahead and click tab again to exit edit mode. And let's say that these shoes didn't exactly fit the way that I want. I want them to be maybe a little bit more narrow. What I'm going to do is do a little bit of sculpting before I apply my weight paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these selected. I'm going to go from object mode into sculpt mode. And the most common sculpting tool that I use is Elastic Deform. It's this little yellow one. It looks like a little gnome hat or something, little Santa hat. I want to use the mirror function again. So this little butterfly is going to apply symmetry to my tool. So when I click X, it's going to apply symmetry along the X axis, which is left to right. So as you see, when I move my cursor right here, it's also putting a dot on the other side, which means it's going to edit those at the same time. So when I move one side in a little bit like this to do a little bit of sculpting, it's automatically moving the other side. And if I want to turn that off, I can also go back up here and just click that X once again. So I'm just going to sculpt a little bit just to make these a little more narrow. Obviously don't have to do this. This is completely personal preference at this point. The sculpt tool also has a uh, size and a strength. I usually leave my strength just the way that it is on the elastic deform at 0.5. And the radius is the size. You can either change it by dragging up here in this bar, or you can do the right bracket and left bracket, which will take it one up and one down. 
or you can tap F and just slide your mouse to the size that you want and then click again and then it'll be that smaller size. So I'm going to do a little bit of a smaller size right now just to get some detail work in. You can also zoom in on your model using your scroll wheel and that will keep your radius the same size but it will be smaller. So if I have it out here it's going to be like the size of my whole foot. If I drag it in here and zoom in it's going to be a lot smaller. So you can have a lot more freedom to work with it like that. So I'm just going to do a couple of little edits and make sure if you have any skin showing out that you can cover that up and remember that it's doing the same on the other side so you really only have to do it with one side of the item. Okay and I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into object mode in the top left corner. That's just your generic mode that you want to stay in most of the time. Now I'm going to click on these once again and I'm going to go into my material properties tab down here on the right hand side. Now I know that I already have a metal on my model that is in my head because I have this piercings material. Instead of having different materials for all of my metals, I want all of my metals to have the same material so that when I bring it into Unity, all of my materials that are metal, I can edit at the same time very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and change piercings to metals, and that's going to be my base metals material. So now when I go into my base shoe, how do I get this metal to be the same? You just highlight the material that you want to change, and you click this little ball looking button. And you go down and you find the material that you just renamed. Metals, you click on that and it will automatically apply all of the properties of that material and basically combine your two materials together so that when you import this into Unity, you'll have two separate base meshes, but they'll both be using the same material, which is super helpful when you want to get down to less materials and have a little bit more optimization while also having less edit work to do. So then I'm going to grab the material for my base shoe. I'm going to toggle down the base color and click the little folder icon to open a new image. And here I have my base color already set in that folder. And there it is. There's my base color. Now that I have my texture all figured out for this shoe, I'm going to go ahead and add it to my armature and add the weight paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and drag my base shoe onto the armature so that it's parented under the armature. I'm also going to rename this to be shoe one because I have two shoes. I'm going to import another pair in just a moment and then I'm going to have material match the name. So shoe one. And I don't have to change the name of this metals one, although if I did change this metals one, I could change it to just metal if I want. And then if I look back at the head, that name of the material will change in both because they are linked to each other. So that's a really good way to just link your materials together is using this little drop down and choosing materials you already have. All right, back to the shoe. Now that it's parented onto the armature, I'm going to do my weight painting and I'm just going to do a data transfer, which is a really simple way of transferring all of the vertex groups from the body onto another object. So I'm going to go into my modifiers tab right here and this still has the modifier from the previous armature that was on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Even if you have an armature that is from this model that you're actually going for, you can just go ahead and delete that armature modifier temporarily because the moment you click fix model after you apply the data transfer, it's going to automatically add that armature modifier back onto your object. So don't even worry about that one bit. We're going to go up and add the data transfer. I'm going to choose a little eyedropper and click on the body. Then I'm going to toggle down vertex data, check mark the box, click on vertex groups. That's all you have to do there and then click generate data layers. Once those are generated, I'm going to click this little drop down and click apply or you can just hover over it and click control A and that will automatically apply that modifier to this pair of shoes. Now I'm going to want to double check that I don't have any of these check marks checked on my fixed model. Click OK and I'm going to go ahead and fix my model now. And as you can see, it automatically applied the new modifier of armature on here. You want to leave that as is. Don't mess with that at all and you're good to go. Now we're just going to test and make sure that it's stuck. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pose mode and just make sure that this is working. And it looks like it's working great. So I'm going to stop pose mode and then I'm just going to smooth out my weight paint just a little bit. Shoes are really easy because they really only have like the foot and the ankle and stuff like that to 
weight paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the armature here or you can click on it up here. And then I'm going to shift click the shoes so that the shoe is highlighted in light blue and the armature is highlighted in dark blue. I'm going to go up on the top left to weight paint and I'm going to change it to blur right here on the left hand side. Then I'm just going to control click each bone and just smooth out the transitions just a little bit. And just so you know, the X mirror symmetry works on a lot of different things. So the X mirror symmetry is on for this. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off just because I like to do each individual weight paint to make sure that everything is good and it doesn't blur it over on the other side more or less than I want it to. So I'm just going to hit it a couple times with blur to make it a little bit smoother. I'm not going to go overboard with blur because I don't want anything clipping through on accident. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and test it right now. I make sure that my X axis is on so it moves both feet. I can kind of see better what's going on and you can see no clipping. It's working perfectly. What about the toes? Yep, the toes are as well. So I'm going to stop pose mode and there you go. Those shoes are done and ready to go. If you want to hide these shoes, there's two ways to do it. You can either hide it up here by clicking the little eyeball right here in your hierarchy under the scene collection, or if you just click it, you can click H and it will hide it and it will automatically put it there. And to unhide it, you just click the little eyeball again right there. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these because I'm just going to really quick race through a whole nother pair of shoes. I'm going to add them really quick and then we can move on to the next step. So I'm going to open up my shoes by going to File, Import, FBX. I'm going to grab my other pair of shoes and these ones look like they fit perfectly to the model so I'm not going to even have to worry about shaping them at all but as you can see they don't have an armature they are just as they are which means that they probably don't have any vertex groups that's correct and they don't have any modifiers this is a perfect starting point so I'm going to go ahead and go to the materials change this to shoes 2 I'm also going to rename the actual object to shoes 2 I'm going to go into the base color of my shoes and I'm going to open up my textures file where I have all of my textures. I'm going to click on the ones that I want to use. And now that those textures are set, I'm going to hold down shift and drag my shoes into my armature. Once those are in my armature, I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to add a data transfer modifier. I'm going to use the eyedropper to select my body. I'm going to click on vertex data, toggle that down, click on vertex groups, and then generate my data layers. You can either do the drop down and apply, or you can just click control A to apply. You make sure everything is unchecked in the fixed model settings. Then I'm going to go ahead and click fix model. Once my model is all fixed, I'm going to start pose mode and I'm going to make sure that everything is posed perfectly. Looks like it is. I'm going to stop pose mode. And once again, I'm just going to click on the armature and then shift click on my object, which is the shoes and go into weight paint mode go into blur and I'm just going to really quickly go over the top of these with my blur brush. This does end up going really quickly once you get used to it and you're adding a lot of different things onto your model. There are a couple of things in Blender that I can help you out with as far as saving your project goes and different things like that. If you go into edit and preferences and down here, if you go into save and load, you can make sure that your auto save is checked. I have my timer for one, which means it auto saves my project every one minute. Unlike Unity, Blender does have a really good recovery program. So if it crashes, you're pretty much safe as long as you have this on. Another thing that I really like to focus on in Blender is if you go to system, you can go to undo steps and the highest amount of undo steps they'll let you have is 256. This is a lot lower by default, so I would recommend turning your undo steps all the way up to 256. That way you can undo 256 things. So if you did a whole bunch of stuff and you realize you need a lot of stuff to go back and undo and then you're going to have to redo something, having a lot of undo steps like Control Z is going to make your life much, much, much better. So I highly recommend turning this up. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a bunch of other clothes to this model in the same way that I added the shoes. This time I'm going to add a pair of sweats. Now it can happen once in a while that whatever you get is not perfectly matched because a lot of times when people create assets, they are creating it for maybe an edit of their base or something like that. So what we want to do with this is just do a little bit of sculpting to make sure that it fits on this body. And I'm just going to line up the bones perfectly so that they're right on top of the other bones. And this will probably make it fit a lot better. 
So as you can see, it's still not exactly perfect, which is totally fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the armature for now. I'm going to go from object mode into sculpt mode. And I'm going to make sure that my symmetrical editing is off because these are not exactly symmetrical pants. And I'm just going to go ahead and move it around a little bit so that everything fits the way that it should. I'm just going to little by little get these to be fitting onto the outside, zooming in and changing the brush size whenever I need to to make sure that it works out well for me until I can no longer see any skin on the outside. You can leave a little extra wiggle room too if you want them to be a little bit baggier. Okay, now that my pants have been sculpted so that they fit the model very well, I also just realized while sculpting that this is actually weighted to Zinpia's RP base and not this base, which is why I had to do that sculpting. So this is a really good way to teach you how to sculpt things that may not fit your exact base because this is definitely for the RP base. You can see there's extra bones where there wasn't before. I'm in fact going to reweight paint these from scratch. And I will show you a little bit of the complicated process of reweight painting a crotch from scratch really quickly. I'm actually going to delete the entire armature out of here like I did before. And that won't remove my sculpting, but it will put the pants themselves back to the default position. So I will have to move them back in place, which is totally fine. I'm just going to hover over what I selected, click X to delete it. And you can see it moved the pants, but the sculpting is all still there. So I'm just going to move these back into place the way that they were. I'm going to go ahead and delete my armature modifier because that's for a different armature than we're putting it in. The materials on this one are already selected, but I would like to have some pink materials that I edited just slightly from the original materials. So I'm going to have an option in Unity to have these be black or pink. So I'm going to start with pink. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my textures folder and select my pink texture. And I'm going to go with this one to start out. Then I'm going to rename these to be sweats. And I'm also going to rename the actual object to be sweats as well. Then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag the sweats onto the armature. And I see down here that I need a little bit more of editing because it's clipping into the foot. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that up with the sculpt tool really quickly. It's best to do all of your sculpting and have it exactly the way that you want it before you do any sort of data transfer or weight painting because it just makes life a lot easier. It's also a good idea to turn on whatever you have underneath it so you can see if your shoes or whatever you have on there will look good with the sculpt that you're doing if you plan to wear them at the same time. Okay, so now that they're sculpted the way that I want them to be and they're in their final resting position and I'm happy with how they look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the vertex groups and I'm going to delete all the vertex groups that were here before because I'm going to be replacing them with my own. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all groups. Then I'm going to go into the modifiers, add a data transfer modifier, select the body, choose vertex data, choose vertex groups, generate my data layers, and then control A to apply that. And now as you go back into the vertex groups, you see that now I have all the correct vertex groups from this body in my vertex groups area. Now pants can be a little bit more complicated to weight paint to your body. And that's because the crotch area sometimes doesn't like to cooperate. So we're going to test it out. First, we're going to fix our model so that it applies our armature. And then once that model is fixed, I'm going to go ahead and start my pose mode with my X axis mirror on. And I'm going to go ahead and spread out her legs like this so that I can work on it from a different angle. Now, I'm not able to weight paint in this very instance right now. And as you can see, the weight paint needs a little bit of extra work. So what I'm going to do is while it's in the pose that I want, I'm going to go up here into pose mode and I'm going to click back into object mode. Now this doesn't permanently apply your pose mode to your model, but as you can see, it doesn't read in cats that it's in pose mode anymore. So this is the perfect way to weight paint your model. So you can select your armature and then select the pants that you want to edit. And you're going to go into weight paint and now you can weight paint it while it's in this pose, which is super helpful. And then what I'm going to do is select the one that it's weight painted to incorrectly. I'm going to go to my pen and make sure it's on subtract. I'm going to put my strength all the way up to 100% and I'm going to take all the weight paint off of this part of the pant that has anything connected to this leg. And that way this pant is all connected to both sides. Then I'm going to go ahead into my blur 
and I'm going to go through all the bones like I always do and I'm just going to blur out all the edges for all these different bones. Remember that's control click and then just lightly blur everything. Now for the legs, as you can see, it's a little bit stretched out right here in the crotch. So what we're going to want to do is do our usual smoothing on each leg. And if you like the way that that looks, that's great, but I'm going to show you one of the problems that I sometimes run into when doing crotch weight painting. If you know any tips and tricks about weight painting for, you know, the crotch area, for the legs area, to make anything easier like that, feel free to let me know in the comments. I am always willing to learn new things and maybe share with other people as well so we can all learn together. So then, once I'm done with this, I can go back into object mode and I can go straight into start pose mode and that will just reset my avatar to the way that it was before. So see how it's not permanent, makes it a lot easier. And I can test to see if that weight paint works for everything. Just kind of move it around a lot, make sure that it is exactly what you want, make sure that it looks decent, looks good with all the different pieces. It looks like it has a little bit of weirdness when I'm making this shape, so I'm just going to go ahead and go back into object mode and see if I can smooth that out a little bit further. I'm going to go back into weight paint, go back into blend, and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get a little bit more smoothness out of this area right here. And as you can see, it's starting to clip right here on the legs. So you can either weight paint that a little bit differently or you can stop pose mode and sometimes just the smallest amount of sculpting will actually help a lot. So if I want these just to go out a little bit wider, maybe that will help. It doesn't always work out that way, but sometimes having a little bit of a cheat works pretty well. If you don't want to do all the extra stuff, just try and do little tiny amounts of movement and see if that will do it. So I'm going to start my pose mode one more time. And it looks like when I'm doing the splits, everything looks much better now. You can see there's no clipping here on the sides. It looks all great now. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop pose mode and I'm going to call it a day. And there you go. That's how you weight paint and blur in a crotch a little bit and have it be really smooth and look cohesive. So by doing that, I just changed these sweats from being weight painted and rigged to the Zinpia RP base to now fitting the Zinpia fit base, which is what I'm using. So if you do find an outfit or an asset that you really like and it's not rigged to the base you want, it is super easy to just change it to exactly what you want. Honestly, I don't even look at what kind of base it is hardly ever anymore because it's just so simple to rig it to a different model, especially if the model is so close in shape with a little bit of sculpting and with automatic data transfer. So now I'm just going to quickly zoom through putting a bunch of different outfit pieces on my model. Now when I'm adding the nails in here, I just wanted to point out that you need to go into your body and go into edit mode. Click on a part of the nail and then select L for linked editing and that will choose the entire nail. So just L on all the current nails that you have because I'm adding different nails and I'm going to do this for both sides. I'm going to go over here to the other side, click L on each one. And the reason I have you click just one single polygon before you select L on the first one is just to make sure that you don't have anything else on the body selected that you might accidentally delete. So I'm just going to go ahead and click X, delete all of these faces, and then exit out of edit mode using tab. And that way, when I add my nails back in, you can see the nails are taking the place of it. And because these nails already have an armature, I am going to use the pre existing armature that they already have on there by going down to the nails armature, fixing that model, make sure that the armature is all correct. It looks right. It's not missing any bones or anything that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and merge these two armatures. I'm going to uncheck remove zero weight bones. I'm going to uncheck join meshes. And again, this is under the custom model creation tab. We've gone over this in a couple of previous videos, but just as a refresher, the base is going to be your main armature with your body and everything on it. And the way you find out which armature is which is not the main 
top level name, it's going to be the name with the little green icon next to it. So all of my body and everything is on armature with no tag after it. So I'm going to have that be my base. And then this one is called armature nails. So I'm going to have that one merge onto my base and I'm going to click merge armatures. Okay. Those armatures are merged. So now let's just one more time, click fix model just to make sure that there weren't any glitches in the armature merge. And then I'm going to start pose mode to make sure that that took, that everything is matched up, that everything is working. So it looks like it is. The fingers are all working as they should. Fingernails are attached. And now all I have to do is add my material onto them. If you want to learn more about a bunch of other tips and tricks I have for Blender, feel free to continue watching this Blender series. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all so much and I'll see you in the next one.